Mauri Mo'o, the coach of the Breakers, joins us and sitting pretty at the moment, third on the table with a couple of games to go. But the big news, people, is over the weekend after beating South East Melbourne was a confirmed playoff spot. So first up, congratulations, coach. Well done. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Well, it's your first year as well. So is this the first, is, was, w- w- what was at the start of the year? Just revisit with us in, in, in terms of what you wanted. Was it first and foremost to go, right, we we got to be back in the big dance? I mean, our goal was never result-oriented. There was a process that we wanted to achieve. There were things that we wanted to do in a certain way. And we felt that if we would, then that would give us a good chance to achieve the results that we wanted them started on the defensive end for us and we've established ourselves as one of the better defensive teams in the league and I'm happy that led to the results we were hoping it would. Well, you are the best defensive team in the league. I mean, it depends on what metric you want to look at it, like through what lens, but we're, we're happy with how we play on the defensive end, yeah. So that, that is the absolute basis for you of your basketball. You get that right, we build from there. Uh, yeah, 100%. That's what we believe in. That's how I see it. And I think that's kind of how the breakers always have been. Do you also believe that what that proves is it proves a commitment not only to the team and the organization, but each other? If you defend for your lives, if, if you make that the priority? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of a chicken and an egg thing. Um, you need to first play for your teammates, for your team, for your community, and then that makes you play hard and commit on defense. And the other way around is also true. When you focus on defense, then you tend to become selfless and you sacrifice for the greater good. So I think it's kind of a thing that sharpens itself, and we're proud of the way we've done that so far. Is that defending at both ends of the court? Uh, I mean, you defend on one side, and you compete on both. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at I look at offensive rebounds as almost defense as well because you're challenging their defense. So I mean, it's just I suppose it's just semantics and words in the end, isn't it? But it's it's committing to both ends of the court like that. There is a there is an aspect in how we play that we want to give it a max effort in every area that max effort is part of it. Yeah? So we want to cut the hardest or go to the offensive rebound the hardest and screen the hardest and everything that has to do with the amount of effort and focus that you put in, we want to be as good as we can. Mo- kind of one of the things that you can control. Modi Mayor is with us. Uh, <clears throat> and I was reading reports over the weekend and they described you as being quite emotional about clinching that playoff spot. Is that how you'd describe your own reaction? Uh, I mean, a lot went into building this team and um, kind of reestablishing this club and where we are and in what the last few years were. And, um, reaching 16 wins was a very big goal for, for me in an individual standpoint to kind of solidify and give us the feeling that what we've done was right. And there was a sense of joy and a little bit of relief, but it subsided 10 minutes after, and now we're focused on the next game against the floor. I love it. That's such a professional attitude to everything, isn't it? Because you've got to live in the moment, and you've got to actually celebrate. I, you know, I call it isolate, separate, and celebrate. You've got to celebrate those moments. Yes, you move on quickly, but you have to acknowledge them, don't you? Uh, I mean, it was it was a great feeling. Um, it was a complicated weekend over here in Auckland, and to have 6,000 people come out and support us in that kind of day and that kind of weather and these kind of circumstances, and for us to be able to perform in front of those fans the way we performed against a very good Melbourne United team and and what it meant, yeah, it was something that was worth celebrating. And uh, I'm grateful that we all as a group had a chance to experience it. But it's also behind us and we have much bigger goals now. The last two round-robin games, do you consider that you're in playoff mode now? Is that how you're going to coach your team from here on in? We've been in playoff mode for, for a while. Um, and it's not something that we shy away from. We've being in the mix, being in the race, having the opportunity to to be in the playoffs and play meaningful games now uh, in this period of time is something that we've been looking for for a long time. So uh, definitely that's our mindset, and these games mean a lot for us. If we win the next two, then we solidify ourselves as the second spot and we get a bye through the first round of the playoffs. 
and if we drop one of them, then we won't. So um, these are very meaningful games for meaningful games for us, back to back on the road that we need to take care of business in. Modi, how far ahead do you look in terms of those playoffs? Um, and I think you might have just explained or explained part of it, but just in terms of who you might play, do you do you do you start planning for that, or do your does you does your support staff uh, plan for that? Because I know that you, as you just said, were very focused on just this next game, win this next game. I mean, this next game means everything. The way the NBL playoffs are kind of built, then. Finishing in the second seed is very meaningful. Um, so the next game is kind of the only game that matters. And then after that, the next game after that will be the only game that matters. That being said, um, the way the ladder has kind of unfolded in the last 48, 72 hours, it's capable for us to predict potential playoff matchups. And I do have our staff um, doing the deep dive, uh, getting the information together. I won't look at it until we're done, but... Um, definitely taking advantage of the time and the fact that we know um, that we're in to, to gain as much advantage as we can. Yeah, as far as the roster goes in terms of injuries or niggles, how are you placed? Knock on wood. Um, it's one of the only times in the season we've been healthy and hopefully it stays this way. Okay, well that's good to hear. The four-game blip, I know these happen during a season. How do you assess it and and? Do you worry about you know when that happens? Uh, like, you know how do you how do you, how do you get up and over those things? I, mean, I worry all the time, so yeah, I definitely worry when that happens. I worry, I worry when we win and I worry when we lose. Right. Um, I'm. It's a good thing that we needed to overcome. Uh, it was uh, your culture means nothing if it only holds when you win. So it was a good thing for us to kind of look in the mirror and see what we need to do better and where there was slippage and what are things that we needed to improve on as a unit. And I'm happy and proud of the way our guys responded. Even you know, those were tough losses, some of them you would say heartbreaking losses, but we never kind of lost our way. Um, we needed to battle to be better in certain things that maybe we took a little bit for granted. Um, but the identity of the group and the willingness to work, the willingness to sacrifice, the uh, the unity of the group was never kind of in question and it was tested and that was a good thing for me. Murray Mayor, the Breakers coach, is with us. I know it sounds, you know, like an old cliche and, and you know, and if it is, just say so, but do you learn more from times like that where you have those runs where things aren't going well or do you, or do you, or do you equally learn as much when you're winning? I think our job is to squeeze out the lessons in any one of the circumstances. Um... There's things that losing teach you, and there's things that winning teaches you. Um, those might be different lessons, but I don't think uh, either is more valuable than the other. I think you're, you're gonna, ha if you're gonna win at the end, if you want to give yourself a, a shot to win the championship, then you're gonna need to to learn the lessons of losing and learn the lessons of winning, and then implement them when it matters most. You probably don't want to single out a certain player or a couple of players or whatever, but is there has there been, you don't even have to name them if you don't want, but has there been a standout person on your roster or, or a couple of people on your roster that ha that this year have, have either surprised you or have really impressed you by what they've done or they've improved to such a level that you've thought, wow? I mean, for me, um, I try to avoid talking about individuals for as much as I can. But that being said, our guys who don't get to play a lot, uh, Sam Timmons, Dan Foto, Alex McNaught, Alex Davison, uh, Jamal Brantley, Jaden Bazant, all those guys have been the tenants on which this team is built. These guys come into work every day, extremely positive attitude, take the toughest grunt of the coaching, compete, push everybody to the max. We just got a warning from the league on how engaged they are on the bench that if they jump up or down again, then we might get a technical foul. So those guys for me are what's special about this team. And it doesn't look like it in the stats, but a big part of why we win is the way they do things. I'm glad I asked you that question then. Oh, they can't give you a technical foul. I mean, I mean if, as long as they don't invade the court, are they just being people, aren't they? Good Lord. Uh, apparently they can't. Apparently there's they can. a code of conduct on the bench, and there's a thing called standing up too much. Okay. So, I mean, this is a technical foul I'm proud to I'll wear as a badge of honor. 
Has this been fun? Can you call it fun? I mean, how much have you enjoyed this year so far? No, it's not fun. Um, I tried intentionally, uh, like we said after the previous game, to to take a moment and enjoy that, and I did, and it was great. Um, but at the same time, there's it's fulfilling, it's challenging, there's growth involved, there's... There's a lot of other positive feelings, but not not fun. No. I want to congratulate you, and I know you're going to deflect it as well for your nomination of Coach of the Year. It's something that at the end of your career or season or whatever, you may have that trophy on the mantelpiece, and you'll only have it because you deserved it. So please accept the congratulations on that. I know it'll probably be somewhere in the attic, and I'll probably never look at it, but probably also won't win it. Um, the nomination is cool. Um for me, there's a misconception and an obsession with these individual awards that don't exist. Um, Coach of the Year award is basically given out to a team that overperforms its expectations. And for us to overperform our expectations, it requires the work of 30 people who outperform their counterparts, whether it's the assistant coaches, the physios, the trainers, the players, the equipment managers, the management. It's kind of a, for me, it's a team award, and when I call it coach, it's okay, but it's just not constructed well in my mind. All the very best. Look, I love talking to you and interviewing you because you're so honest uh, with your answers, and you're so thoughtful with your answers, and I thank you very much for that, and I know Breakers fans appreciate that as well. All the best for this game on Thursday night. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.